Warding and vision control may not be the most exciting of topics to cover in League of Legends, but it's by far one of the easiest and most rewarding skills to learn. There are some really silly errors that players make when it comes to warding, leading to more deaths and lost objectives constantly. So in this guide, we're going to cover 5 ways you can immediately improve your vision game to gain an edge over your opponents. To kick things off, we're going to criticize a ward that you probably wouldn't think is bad to begin with. This blue buff ward deep into the enemy's jungle is generally seen as pretty good, and we're not going to disagree. We always commend deep vision from players, as it gives you much more information on the whereabouts of the enemy jungler, and more time to react to anything they might be scheming. So why would we say that this specific ward is bad then? Well, simply because it can be better. What we'd suggest you begin using instead is the ward right behind the wolf pit, which scouts not one but two jungle paths. And it should go without saying that it works on both sides of the map. Take this Lee Sin game for reference. He's clearing his blue side jungle, and if there was a ward here, he would immediately be spotted doing so. That's really valuable information, but what happens after? Well, as Lee paths to around here, that previous ward would no longer be in range to spot him anymore. He could be pathing into the river, or he could be going towards his raptors, but there's no way for his opponents to know anymore. But with the ward behind wolves, we can clearly see both of Lee Sin's potential paths are obvious. The enemy Lucian, unaware of Lee's exact location, goes for a bit of an aggressive trade, only to be punished by the Lee who decided to go into the river to do scuttle, and thus we can see the small weakness of that deep ward between the blue and gromp, which is why you should be warding in the middle behind the wolf pit. This ward gives you so much better information as to where the enemy jungler is headed, since you can see both ways that they are going. We do have to make you aware of something though. This ward isn't strictly better, but it will be in 99% of cases. The one weakness it has is that players could hug the wall on both sides to avoid it. As you can see, it can't cover this area perfectly. That being said, this requires your opponents to be playing around this specific ward, and since most players don't know about it and players tend to play on autopilot, then yeah, it's not really a concern most of the time. Therefore, it's almost always better to place this one over the previous one. The next ward we're going to cover is this river brush ward near mid lane. This ward is misplaced by a majority of players and there's multiple reasons why. First up is the actual placement within the brush. One of the biggest mistakes players make in general with wards is not placing them at the edge of brushes. There's a bunch of cases where this can actually cause you to not spot enemy players as they might just walk outside of the vision of your ward. Most players wouldn't realize this about the river brush ward, but you will actually not spot enemy players hugging the wall if you don't place it at the edge of the brush. Again, junglers or maybe roaming supports, you should take advantage of people's laziness and hug this wall each time you're pathing towards mid. For everyone else, you really need a normal cast keybind for your wards so you can place it correctly. Riot also makes this easier as the indicator changes color whether your ward is going to be in the brush or not. So you normal cast, get as close to the edge as possible, and place down your ward. Keep in mind that although we said that these ward placements will be mirrored for both sides, it's not actually true for the bottom river brush. As you can see, the ward indicator barely reaches the wall when placed at the edge of the brush in the top river, but in the bottom river, the brush is actually a bit closer to the edge of the wall. All this means is that technically the correct ward placement is somewhere around here for the bottom river. For all the min maxers out there, this will grant you all the vision of the ramp you need while giving you the most vision of the river as possible as well. Besides just placement in the brush, there are also cases where the ward in general won't give you the protection you need. Versus champions with wall hopping capabilities, you won't notice them coming in to gank you before it's way too late, which is why we often recommend the ramp ward as your go-to autopilot ward for mid laners. It spots ganks from the jungle in advance, while also giving you good coverage of the river. Unless, of course, you're placing a control ward, in which case it should obviously be in the brush, not out in the open. Moving on to the third ward we're critiquing, it's going to be this very common tri brush ward that players tend to place when they plan on playing aggressively. This is relevant for both the blue side top lane player and the red side bot lane, but it will be slightly more relevant for top lane as this leads to more deaths for them than the bot duo. So why is this one bad? Well, it's not that the ward itself isn't great, it's that it requires other wards to actually be fully effective. The problem is that if you only have this ward, then you're completely susceptible to plays from the river. You're basically gambling on the fact that the enemy jungler will come from the tri brush, and if they don't, you're dead. 
So the tri-brush ward needs to be paired with other wards in order to be effective. For starters, if your mid lane or jungle is warding your side of the river as well, then it's completely fine to place this ward, as you now have complete coverage of whenever the enemy jungler enters the river. You can also double up on your wards as well, just like this Camille did. This is totally acceptable and great coverage if you plan to be playing aggressively. And that's the only reason for why we mentioned that this is slightly more relevant for top lane. It's obviously harder to cover multiple wards when you only have access to one trinket or one control ward, whereas bot lane has double the amount of wards, so this is generally less of a problem for them. There is one small concern to this which we'll address though. If you're warding the river and playing very aggressively, then by the time you see the enemy jungler, it'll be too late anyways. In a lot of cases, yes, but with this ward, you can at the very least waste a ton of the enemy jungler's time due to the vision it provides you. All you have to do is walk back and forth and react to which way the enemy jungler tries to commit for you. It may just be delaying the inevitable, but in a lot of cases, you could potentially juke your way to surviving a gank. Not only that, but it may provide your teammates the necessary time needed to score a cross map play such as Dragon or the Rift Herald if you pulled this off as a bot laner. The fourth ward we're going to advise you against is the Lazy Anti-Tower Dive Ward. This has got to be one of the most useless wards in the game that players consistently place. It does absolutely nothing to prevent you from being killed, since by the time you see the dive coming, it's already way too late to back off. For such a weak ward, it's placed way too often and very rarely actually saves someone from death, which is surprising considering there's a much better ward able to be placed by taking just two steps further into the jungle, and we mean this ward, of course. If you're solely looking to defend yourself from tower dives, then this ward would give you a lot more time to see your opponents coming and to back off. Not only does it serve as an anti-dive ward, but at the same time gives you critical information of whether your jungle is being invaded or not. As we see from this particular example, Volibear's correct ward placement spotted Shin Zhao's invade. His allies then use that information to collapse on the enemy team, which eventually nets them a favorable two-for-one trade, all because he placed the proper ward of the two. And for our final ward criticism, it has to go to the suboptimal Dragon and Baron Pit wards that we still see for some reason. We find these particularly crazy, since this should probably be the most autopilot ward in the game by now, and yet we still see players with incorrect placements all the time. Here's a couple reasons why these random wards are not ideal. 1. If you place it near the back of the pit, then a ranged auto attacker could just clear your vision denial from over the wall. That is obviously not ideal if you're trying to deny vision to prevent your objective from being stolen. Secondly, depending on where you place it, your control ward may not deny all enemy wards from the pit. If your opponent spots a bad control ward on your part, then they could adapt and place one just outside of your ward's range, which means that the correct placement for both objectives is just slightly inside the pit, right in the middle of the walls. Just make sure that it's not outside of the pit, as that won't spot wards in the back. If you didn't know this placement, then congrats, as you can now autopilot place this ward for the rest of your life. You really don't have to think much about this one, and it's going to make taking objectives much easier for you. Alright guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little more about Skillcap. So, we offer a 5 division rank up guarantee and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's kind of like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well in fact that we are able to produce by far the largest catalog of premium league guides on the internet. We add over 20 videos a week with over 1600 guides curated into over 100 courses no one can compare. We've also sent challenger players into ELO Hell 629 times and counting where they commentate how to carry live. They also respond to all questions asked. Sign up today for as little as $4.99 a month if you're serious about improving. Alright guys, we hope these wards help bring your vision game to the next level. Hope you enjoyed and we'll catch you in the next video. See ya!